Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through how to paint strip and reprime a panel. So first off, we'll have a look at the, um, the panel that we've got and we'll see what's actually happening with it there. You can see that the paint's actually flaking off and the reason that's flaking off is because they didn't even sand it, which is uh, one of the basic fundamental parts of spray painting. Uh, sometimes it actually boggles me how a tradesman spray painter could do work like that. But uh, not to worry, uh, the business has actually since gone out of, uh, out of business. Uh, it was a neighbouring panel shop from uh, the area. And uh, what actually happened, this was a customer of ours originally. And we were too busy to fit his car in and he wanted it done. It was just a, a bit of a scratch on his fender. And he took it back for the colour, which they then blended into this door. And they obviously didn't uh, prepare it properly and it turned into a big job and they ended up doing the whole side and both two doors uh, are completely flaking off. So we ended up having to strip both of these two doors. Um, I stripped the front door wet and I ended up stripping the rear door dry, which I'm going to uh, include in a uh, different video um, because this one got long enough as it is. So uh, what you saw me doing just before was... Um, using a screwdriver you've got to be careful you don't want to uh, etch into it too much and start going into the metal but as long as you don't go through your paint uh, what that screwdriver helps etch it up and key into it and it gives that paint stripper something to bite into so once i've got the paint stripper evenly distributed we'll then put the plastic on and you can actually help move it around also once you've got the plastic on too so uh, obviously taking note of the PPE that we should be wearing, gloves, I'm wearing the overalls jacket and also uh, respirator and breathing apparatus. So it's pretty important with this stuff. It is a uh, highly, uh, extremely bad uh, chemical inside there. It's uh, some chlorine type, uh, yeah, it's one of the worst chemicals I've ever worked with. So. Um, yeah, so we just gave it 30 minutes to do its job and uh, depending on how much paint's on there you may need to reapply some spots and stuff like that. It's not uncommon that you have to do that. Uh, you also probably took note of me that masking tape I put around the edge. That's pretty important because uh, it's got it's prone to uh, eating in and if I hadn't have done that well, then it would have ended up all on the inside of the door and we would have had to paint the inside as well. There's, there's no need to. So... Now, what actually kills the, neutralizes the acid is water, which is why I've actually got it out there uh, and I'm using the uh, tap water just to uh, neutralize that acid, so um, it's all going to uh, get rid of it. And we're then just scraping off the rest of the loose spots and then drying it down, just wiping it down with a, damp, uh, with a dry rag. And then we've got the air gun and we'll be blowing it off with the air gun. If you hang around to the very end, I've actually got some bonus footage at the end of uh, paint stripping an aeroplane, which is something different. Just a quick clip at the end there too. So just getting the rest of that water off, and we're then going to start sanding. So around that door frame, I didn't want to get paint stripper because it would have just made a mess and got inside, got on the inside. So it's easy just to dry strip stuff like that. Um, and we only have to take the affected areas off. There's no need to take off uh, right back to the primer because the paint stripper hasn't um, contaminated that primer. Whereas on the rest of the door, as soon as the paint stripper has touched it, uh, that uh, all that paint is contaminated and it needs to come off 100%. So usually you try to keep it flat, but uh, the sander flat, but places like this it's uh, you got to edge it up a little bit and then we'll be finishing it off by hand to some of the bits that the orbital sander couldn't get and you probably take note that I'm using the vacuum vacuum cleaner as well and you should be wearing a dust mask too just to keep the uh, even that dust that comes off really stinks there's a quick look at it once I buzz it all back a few more bits that we've got to get here and there on the edges I've also got the um, the footage of the paintwork on this, so I'll be editing and uploading that at a later date, and also the prep work. So I've got this job from start to finish, and I'll make a few separate videos out of it. I'll make a playlist for it later on, and you can check it out on my channel. 
Once that's all done, I then gave it a wipe down with some Prepsol or wax and grease remover on the entire door and blew, uh, blew it off again, blew all the dust off again. And now I'm masking it up. So masking that out, ready for primer. Putting those bits of paper around there and just taping it down. I'll be taking you through how to mix up the primer and the products that we're going to be using too in a minute. Uh, I'm using just a 1K etch primer, which means it's um, uh, non two pack, so it doesn't have a hardener. It, it, you only use thinner in it. So um, this is a extremely good uh, etch primer we're using here. I think it uh, sticks very well to many different metals. You can use it for aluminium, stainless steel, um, steel as well, and it's uh, chromate free, which is on that can. It said 1KCF, so basically uh, a lot of the uh, older uh, green primers, which do stick very well, they have a um, ingredient in there called chromate, and I don't really know too much about it, but all I know is it's extremely cancerous and extremely bad for you, so just be careful when you're using any green primers that they're chromate free. Most of them probably are these days, but something to be cautious of. So just put now 1k etch on now. Just you don't have to go like full heavy. It's just medium wet type coat. Since making this video, I've uh, started listening to some of you guys, the subscribers, and I do actually now wear gloves. So. I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks and um, yeah, thanks for your feedback on that kind of stuff guys and uh, it is valued and I look at myself in this video and I think how could I do that, uh, I wouldn't do it anymore, just get messy and you see that spray gun there, it's it's a $45 spray gun and it sprays like a $45 spray gun, it's crap to be honest, um, I don't know if you saw the fan, it's spraying off to the right, it's just... Uh, yeah, I actually regret, I think $45 was too much for it. So, you get what you pay for. And just make sure we give that two-pack primer a really good stir. I edited out the most of the stirring there, but a lot of apprentices and that, they don't stir it up properly, and then uh, they're spraying half hardener over half of the jobs, and then the rest of it, they're just spraying over the primer filler. So, I wouldn't usually have mixed up that much primer just for... Uh, this door but as you saw then I'm, I'm doing a batch of putty up so all, all I'm actually going to be putting on this door is just two coats of the primer surfacer and it's not going to need any uh, blocking at all because it's back to a brand new door uh, that's another thing that you do uh, run the risk of when you're um, paint stripping because you, you're not to know what's underneath there could have been old repairs and you may have to carry out some body filler repairs and stuff like that um, and also, uh, you've got to just talk to the guys that you work with, or talk just talk to some guys in the trade. You're actually also more than welcome to check me out on Facebook, send me some photos of some jobs you've got, and I'll do my best to help you out with um, your projects and that. Um, but what I was going to get to is you've got to uh, decide the best way if you if you need to paint strip a panel, you got to decide the best way of doing it. Sometimes it's be better off doing it dry, just with the orbital sanders. Sometimes you're better off doing it wet with the paint stripper, and sometimes you're actually even just better off taking it down to the sandblasters. Uh, we don't have a, a sandblasting shed here ourselves. Most panel shops don't either. But um, yeah, it's it's not too expensive to get some like stuff like wheels and stuff like that, which you just can't get into all of the the grooves and stuff like that. It's easier just to sometimes take it down to the sandblaster and pay them a little bit of money to get that done. So. Here we go, we've got a bit of bonus aeroplane paint stripper footage. Um, this is just a project that we do. Um, uh, I do this after hours, after my automotive job, and just go up to the airport and uh, just sort of get some footage of this too. Just thought it was relevant to this job, so we just get these big trays, tip that paint stripper in, and just tip it over the whole plane. It's a uh, yeah, pretty big project, takes a long time, but get it done in a few weeks. So This is the uh, finished product here. And we have one happy customer, so hang around and uh, there's a couple of links at the end to a couple of my other personal favourite videos and there's also a link to view my channel.
here as well. So there's playlists and all stuff like that on my channel. So thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.